So here we have the, uh, the dynamo or the generator and the coil that we uh, pulled off the Morris Minor. And there's a couple of interesting things about this. Um, first of all, you can see that it had one coat of a sort of a dark green, but underneath is a lighter green, which is more typical of a Morris engine of this time period. And it seemed to be that a lot of times they painted the uh, uh, generator on the uh, on the engine when they were uh, you know, assembled the engine and they just basically slopped paint all over the whole thing. And it would be that green color. The other thing that's really interesting to me, um, well, it has a genuine Lucas coil on the top, but is there's a sort of a hip in the generator that fits the bracket for the coil. And typically these generators are just smooth sided all the way down. And so this is, this is somewhat unusual and uh, suggests that this was original to the car and, uh, and has this, uh, the casing for the generator has a kind of a hip to it. You can see it there, which is not typical on a lot of these, uh, these generators. And this is a genuine Lucas generator. And so um, what we might do is uh, proceed a little bit further and maybe instead of replacing this one, rebuild it. Now, if we place the uh, coil up on its end and take a look at the brushes where they come up against the armature, we can see that the brush right there is pretty small. And uh, a lot of times if these things uh, st stop producing much um, current, it's because the brushes aren't making very good contact or because the armature surface here is, is really dirty and, and carboned up. And so you're just simply not getting good contact. And this has two brushes uh, opposite each other, which are held in by um, springs. And these are inexpensive. Um, pick up a set for about $10 uh, US. And they're fairly easy to change. And at the same time, then, you can clean the armature here and make sure you have a good contact. The other area where these fail is there's uh, bearings in them, and they can go. But this one really feels smooth, and it doesn't make any noise, and, and it seems like the bearings are pretty good. And so I'm thinking I might actually go ahead and put new brushes in this and rebuild this, mainly because it's got this sort of, you know, interesting little hip in it that a lot of them... Uh, don't have, and I suspect that this was original to the car. Here's some more interesting insights in terms of original finish. This looks like it's just crudely sprayed on the outside with a green that's not a Morris green, but if we looked in inside the bracket. We can see there's two kinds of greens, one of which is more like the Morris engine green which has since been overcoated by that sort of brighter green. And that would suggest that this bracket was on there and then they spray painted the whole thing um, with the Morris green. Whereas the bracket that holds the coil doesn't look like it was ever painted in that green color. So they may well have put this bracket on, had it on the coil, and then uh, mounted that to the car, painted the engine, painted everything, and then later on added the electricals in the coil. Now, what else is interesting is you can see that same color, the real Morris green underneath that uh, very, very kind of uh, bright green that someone resprayed the engine with. And there's this hip, this little, you know, hip in the, uh, in the body of the generator uh, where the, uh, the coil um, bracket rests against. Now that's kind of interesting, and I kind of want to keep this this generator then rather than just replacing it, and uh, see if we can add some new uh, new brushes to it and and get it up to speed. Getting into the the brushes is pretty simple. Disassembling mainly disassembling the the generator is also pretty simple. There's two long screws that go from the back side to the front side that you have to undo. Now they can be really tight, so you might want to fit. A spanner onto your uh, onto your screwdriver to give you a little bit more leverage to get them going, but they should get going. Uh, use a pretty wide screwdriver so you don't ruin the uh, the heads of the screws. So as I said, the screws are pretty long, 
and uh, and once you remove them, you should be able to take off the back plate of the uh, of the uh, generator and get to the brushes. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got. There's the plate coming away. Those are the two brushes. There's the armature and there's inside. And it looks pretty mucky. It definitely needs to be cleaned. What about these brushes? Well, we're gonna take one out and we'll compare it to a new set of brushes and uh, just see how worn they are. Now the graphite brushes are held up against the armature by these coiled springs. And then they make contact here. So to remove the brushes, all you have to do is basically unscrew this and then pass the brush forward. And we're gonna do that and then compare the size of the brushes to, uh, to a new set of brushes. Okay, I'm gonna remove the, uh, the old brush. Here it is, just move it forward through there. And uh, here's a comparison with the old brush to a new brush. Uh, these brushes are knackered. I can't believe that they were getting any charge whatsoever uh, from these things. I can't imagine how they were making contact at all with the armature. So these graphite brushes are completely toast. And of course we put these new ones in. If everything's okay with the winding, that nah, we should be, we should have a, a good alternator here, but we need to do a bit more work on it. But certainly, uh, it was time to replace the brushes a long time ago. Now you can see inside here, it's it's pretty dirty, it's pretty mucky. The exterior needs to be uh, wire brushed and sanded in order to clean it up. If we're going to save this, so we really want to clean this up uh, if we're going to try to save this. And what we can do is we can take off the outer casing here pretty easily. A couple gentle taps uh, on the bottom part here, and uh, and this should become free. And just don't, you don't wanna break this wire here. It should be attached to the casing. So let's see if we can do that. There we go. So there's the armature free. There's the casing free. That way we can work on the casing, clean it up, without getting any debris and things in here. As well as then we can clean up this area of contact here. And hopefully when we put it all together, uh, things are gonna work. If it doesn't, then we're gonna have to, you know, uh, we'll take, take the pulley off of this one and we'll get a rebuilt one. But I'd like to think that we, can, we could save this one. Very gently, using very fine sandpaper, cleaning off all the rust and the muck which are on these surfaces here uh, of the armature. Uh, they were pre pretty disgusting, and we're still gonna have to go after the, uh, the contact end here, which is copper, and these are, these are steel. So they're rusty and they're mucky, but they're, they're cleaning up pretty nicely. So we've cleaned up the armature, and uh, we have new brushes to replace the worn brushes for the Morris Minor. Um, but before we, uh, you know, go too crazy and uh, clean off all the paint from the casing and all the aluminum and all of that sort of thing, we want to make sure that we know that this thing works. So we're going to put it back together and test it before we get too far into uh, painting it and refurbishing it. But there's something I wanted to point out that's really important on all these little Lucas C40 style um, uh, dynamos or generators, which is that they have a fiber a washer here at this end and you can see this one is broken and it's almost done sometimes you'll find them without the fiber washer or you might even not notice it's there and it will fall off when you're servicing it so you want to have that in place and uh, and so we'll replace that one uh, with a with a new one as we get going now putting the brushes in is really pretty simple um, we see the old brush <laughs> nothing not much left the new brush here we have two of them, one on each side. And um, the way they go in is, is really straightforward. You just sort of put them around the, uh, around the uh, spring, push them against the spring like that. And then 
you bring this over and you'll tighten this in with a screw. And then when you put them onto the armature, you'll just push them into their little seating and it will hold them really strong against that. And, uh, and so that is what we're gonna be counting on to help us make this thing efficient. Besides the fact that we've cleaned everything up now and it was so carbonized that I, I, I can't believe it was in such small brushes. It's hard to believe that it was actually generating any kind of a charge. We put the dynamo or the generator back together uh, before doing big job cleaning it up and painting it just to make sure it works. And there's a really simple bench test you can do to see if it's, it's going to work. And uh, so what you do is you set a jumper between the two terminals coming out of the back. And so you've jumped between those two terminals. You have a line that goes to a test bulb. You also then ground and have a line uh, from that ground that goes to the test bulb. So the test bulb is grounded out here and it's connected to the smaller terminal here. And the two terminals are jumped. Then all you need to do is take a, uh, take a drill or something that can spin the thing and see if it lights up the light. It should be giving voltage. Faster goes the brighter the light. So it seems to be functioning pretty well, which means that it's probably worth our time to go ahead and clean it up and uh, and reinstall it back in the car because it probably is original equipment with new brushes and cleaned up. It should work pretty well.